How's your neck doing, by the way? Uh, my neck feels fine. Yeah. So unfortunately that was something that kind of derailed my career. Like uh, I was in the bullet club in new Japan. Things were going good. Yeah. And I just caught a dive one day, uh, like Nick Jackson, who I'd caught many times before, um, just kind of hit me weird. And I have like a really bad pinched nerve. So I took some time off from new Japan. That's eventually how I ended up losing my job. I told them I need some time off. And uh, during that hiatus, they decided just to bring over some bullet club guys to kind of just like fill the roster. Adam page, Adam Cole, people switched over. So by the time I was finally healed up and like feeling good again, they told me like, Hey, you know, we've kind of moved on without you. Maybe we can work you back in for next year. And uh, at the time I wasn't really sure like what to do. You know, I wasn't sure if that was like their true answer or that was just a way to kind of like, uh, you know, like let me go quietly. And I was kind of like going through it. So I asked my good friend Lance Archer for his advice. And uh, he told me I'm about to leave Nella. Maybe you could go there. They could be looking for a new big guy. And I said, Hey, that makes a lot of sense. And he said, if you want to come down to a cork and later today, I'll introduce you to the boss. So I came down, met him, and I was able to just kind of like step into Lance's shoes, get a job there, and kind of transition. Oh, but wow. um, I always miss that New Japan job. You know, I miss that blue mat. You know, that was unfortunate. Well, is there is there an opportunity to go back there, do you think? Uh, I would hope so. I haven't really been in touch with them. Like I said, I kind of felt weird about leaving. You know, I've been in the dojo for years. People say once you're in the New Japan dojo, you're kind of their boy for life. But I just kind of felt like things kind of went down weird between Hattori and I. However, they had kind of filled my spot. And uh, I just decided to keep it rolling, but I don't think there's any burned bridges or bad blood. I would hope. So maybe just, someday. I would think it's weird. You know, not only do you move on from new Japan, you move on from like picking up your entire life, moving it across the world and then bringing it back to America. Like that's a, it's like, it's almost like a, you know, like one chapter of your life is done and then it's back to what you had before. Yeah, that was definitely a hard time for me because um, I had been living in the dojo when I had that injury. I went back to like heal up and live with my father. And, uh, you know, I don't want to speak ill about my father, but we were having a tough time then, and it was a tough place for me to be. And I decided to move back to Japan full time, even just to train, train in the New Japan dojo. So they would see me there every day, just putting in work, letting them know that I wanted to be a part of you. And uh, that's when I started having these kind of weird conversations with Hattori where he was telling me, hey, man, you know, yeah, we want to use you, but we're full right now. And I said, hey, well, I just, you know, put my whole life on hold, sold everything to come back here and train and show you that. So that's why I kind of felt like I had my back against the wall and ended up having that conversation with Lance Archer and just saying, you know what, I'm not sure I can wait. I'm not sure how this is going to go. Maybe I should just uh, make the next play. You know, through all of this, has WWE ever reached out to you? No, I've never had a try or contact with anybody, actually. I feel like, you know, you'd be exactly what they're looking for. I don't, it would make sense. I mean, maybe not. Uh, no one's ever talked to me. So I kind of guess uh, I'm not sure what to think about it. Um, I always hoped like my father's advice for me was to go to Japan and like learn how to work. And I always assumed that I would just go to Japan and just be really good. And eventually someday would want me and somebody would want me and they would call me and say, hey, we have something for you. And uh, that call never came. You know, I remember being there for years. I'm like once a year, uh, William Regal and Canyon Seaman would come watch the shows. And I remember like looking out to the crowd and seeing like two white faces, like, wow, that's, that's them. You know, they're watching tonight. Then after the show, I'd go sell my gimmicks and like, I would see them go to the bathroom and they'd be right in line, you know, as close as I am to my camera. And they just wouldn't look at me, wouldn't say anything. So I just thought, you know, maybe it's not meant to be. Wow. 